Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. Mm -hmm. True story. On the way to this podcast, I had a slip and fall on a mop floor in the Bell building. Oh, and my my arm is it hurts. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see this Avengers movie. I haven't had a chance to see it. And I'm aware that things are going to get spoiled for me. I I, I know I'm not going to go in totally fresh. Mm -hmm. People are like commenting on videos we post and then following it up with, and this person dies. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, dear big boy. Where am I? You're in Ottawa, sir. I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. Hey, boy, come here. Don't shoot me. I- I'm just a child. Don't be silly. Mm-hmm. So you guys wrote that? <laughs> and they were like, okay, good. That sounds like a good way to represent our restaurant. Mm-hmm. The best would be if there was an alternate take in which the child did get shot. Why does the cowboy have to get close to him? The to cowboy him? gets close and then... Mm-hmm. Hey, boy, come here. Don't shoot me. I- I'm just... Giddy up. You're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast. By the way, I f***ed your mom. Mm. Yeah, Dan. Dance. May the 6th be with you. Oh, it's May the 4th. Happy May. It's May. Hey, finally. Summer is here. Yeah, the tulips, they're bursting. They're trying to get out. They haven't come out yet. Hmm. Mine have. Ooh. My tulips downtown. The downtown tulips. But the cherry blossoms are apparently not. They are, they're not blossoming. They're supposed to have blossomed. So your tulips are better than mine, I guess, eh? Well, you're li- you live s- so far up north. <laughs> I live east. You live so far up north and east <laughs> that you... The good weather. That's why, you th- that's why you're getting so confused about whether it's still winter or not. The different ecosystem. It practically is. <laughs> you do get different weather than we do. Like, so you'll, you all often come, come in and say, I did it snow all day uh, <laughs> down here. Well, in, like in Scarborough? We're like, no. We're like, oh, all right. <clears throat> Beautiful. Hey, uh, we're going to kick things off with uh, some CK DJ clips, I understand, because we kind of buried them deep into the podcast last <laughs> time, and they were so funny. We thought, well, let's, let's push them to the front. Let's oh, there, big boy. Yeah, baby. So that was the only ad. That was from last week. That was an ad that played during our Ottawa 67s mm. games that we wrote and produced and, and voiced. You, you being you and fellow students at Algonquin College. Yes. And um, that's the only ad I found, but I found a bunch of other DJ work. Um, this is the scraping the bottom of the barrel. Well, it's all the bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. There's no middle part of the barrel. It's just the in the bottom. Got to start somewhere. So all aspiring broadcasters know that, uh, hey, could be worse. (laughs) They'll use these clips as examples in broadcasting schools all across the country for students who are maybe struggling, not getting it. (laughs) Like, I don't know, maybe I'm not cut out for this biz. Then the professor will say, listen, let me play a clip. (laughs) Prominent broadcaster Dan O'Toole. Here's him in college. Okay, let's uh, let's take a listen to what those students will be listening to. One thousand Mona Lisas, and what's that line on ninety six point nine CKDJ? Now that we've got the call over with Biff, we can get back to business here at CKDJ. If you're going to be down in the market tomorrow night, don't forget to go to the Johnny Vegas Funhouse. It's presented by CKDJ, and it's at Zafod's Beeblebrox. It's on York Street, down on the Byward Market. And tomorrow night on stage will be Cat and Wigmore's Cannons. It's only $2, so you can't miss out. If you uh, want to see the faces behind the voices, then head down there, because there's going to be tons of CKDJ personalities to greet you, give you CDs between the acts, give you mugs, give you T-shirts. They give you uh, about everything they possibly can besides their... uh, well, cars and anything that's over a dollar. 
So head down there, and Christian Dubois will show you the business. Dubois. Up next, we've still got great music to come, the amps filter. But up next, the distractions right after this. Eight ball, cross corner, two banks, yeah. and a kiss. I was actually. Take, I feel take like a you breath. improved. Hey kid, take a breath. <clears throat> I feel like you improved a little bit. There. And Christian Dubois will show you the business. Oh, he'll show you the <laughs> business, all right. Dubois was getting a lot of business back then. Well, it seems like you. Uh, that was pretty competent. But the attempt at the joke. They'll give you everything that's uh, that's under a dollar, except cars or whatnot. <laughs> We're not giving away a car, this. Well, cars and anything that's over a dollar. <laughs> Hilarious! <sighs> Did you think at that time, hey, I've got a future as a hilarious, like, morning guy, like a, like a morning zoo radio guy? No, I hated doing that. Okay. So you knew that you wanted to get into <laughs> sports broadcasting and... So this is just, I got to get through this. Yeah, you uh, want to see the faces behind the voices, then head down there. <laughs> yeah, this was a requirement. Everyone had to do this. You had uh, to then do, head down there. You had to try the news. You had to try the promotions department. You had to try the uh, on-air DJ. Right. And I'm like, uh, what's, who's in the sports department? They're like, no one. I'm like, I'm in. I would love to have seen you in the promotions department. <laughs> Giving everything away as quickly as you could and then just leaving. That's what I'd do. If I were you. Um, Give everything away. Sidetracking because I'm drinking a uh, delicious coffee from uh, from Tim Hortons, but it's not in a Tim Hortons cup. Um, did you watch the Game of Thrones? Yes. Are you talking about the, the Starbucks cup that yes. was in the show? This is fascinating to me because, well, I'd love to get your take on it. I have a thought. I have thoughts. I just can't believe that through editing yes. and with the visual effects that they can do. Yes. Because someone would see that in the process from the shoot to the edit to all of that. That's they would what, see it and just blur it out. I couldn't agree more. I feel like that is 100% meant to be there. I really do. Because there's no way that it could get through all those editors and multiple edits. I mean, this show is so important to HBO Think of the people who saw the episodes before, executives, promo people. You're telling me nobody saw this cup and then all of a sudden it appears. So in case you're wondering, there was a scene in Sunday's episode of Game of Thrones. Everyone's sitting around eating. It was very awkward, I thought, because everyone was just, they fought this like battle against these white walkers. And then everyone's just like, all right, I guess we're in the cafeteria now. <laughs> this is going to have some gruel. And some wine. And a lot of wine. And, uh, yeah, at one point, somebody did a screen grab, and uh, in between Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen, there appeared to be a, a tall latte takeout cup from Starbucks. Did you notice it while watching it? I did not. Neither did I. I did not notice it. I'm not paying that close of attention. Me neither. <laughs> I'm barely paying it. Dan, I have to be honest with you. I, we've talked about this. I want this to be over. Yeah. I, I, it feels like homework now. It's not fun anymore. That I said to my wife today. I was like, because I watched the, an hour, it's an hour 20 or whatever. And I said, an hour 20. So I watched an hour last night and the last 20 I watched this afternoon. And I'm just like, what? like I'm looking at the, I'm stopping it and I'm seeing how much time is left. I'm like, oh God. Can't this just, can we wrap it up with a two hour movie and be done with it? Can't we do that? No, I'm the same. I just want it over, and I, I really the love the show. On. I wanted the battle to go on for a few episodes. The battle episode now, in hindsight, was pretty cool. Though, okay, here we go. Spoilers. Just everybody, here come some spoilers. Okay, so okay. I'll give you two seconds so you get here. two seconds to stop. How long then. are the spoilers going to go on for? We'll do a minute. Oh, okay. one minute. One minute, and then so you can fast forward a minute, and you'll be free and clear. Very quickly. The dragons. They make it through the whole White Walker battle, and then freaking uh, Greyjoy, the psycho, mm -hmm. takes him out with a couple of bows and arrows? Yep. That's it. It's over? That was, like, so anticlimactic. That's what I felt about the battle. It was anticlimactic. I wanted the bad dragon, the White Walker dragon, to take out one of those dragons, and then the other dragon to avenge that dragon. 
That would have been better. They are great on building things up, and then when they get to the point of build up, then they're just like, yeah, whatever. Okay, on to the next thing. I feel like the so there are only two episodes left, correct? All right, spoilers over. I think we're clear now. You're spoil. We're out of the spoil zone. You're you're in the spoiler free zone now. So now they have to wrap it up. They got a couple episodes left. Just kill everyone. It's just everyone die, and then <laughs> in the end, the only one living is like I don't know, just a minor character who takes over everything, like that bald guy who's the gossip, yeah. <laughs> the guy who has no penis. Um, my brother sent out a tweet about the uh, the cup today. My brother, a very, uh, very funny follow up. Vince O'Toole, we should yeah. get him back on. Talk about his uh, Blackberry. He said, uh, here, was his, uh, here was his tweet. Dragons? Question mark? Sure. Magic? Question mark? Sure. Zombies? Question mark? Sure. Giants? Question mark? Sure. Believe all that sh- but you don't think Starbucks has a franchise in Westeros? <laughs> the King of the North will be riding into battle with a Tim Hortons double double. <laughs> it's true. You gotta have coffee. Uh, okay, let's go back to CKDJ. Well, one more. Should, should we get to the clip from my weekend? That needs discussing. Oh yeah, but let's do one more. Okay, one more CKDJ. I feel like we just we just dipped our toes <laughs> into that world. Okay. Okay, one more. But I get so embarrassed. It's very embarrassing to play these. I gotta say that last one wasn't bad. Let's see okay. how this next one is. Let's get ready to ski! Attention all holes if don't like to have fun. Turn off your radio, the rest of you crank it. And listen up. On January 20th, CK, DJ, and Tommy LaFave are bringing you Winter Fantastic Day at Mont Saint Marie. Your favorite CK oh, DJ personalities will be dishing up free hot dogs and burgers all day long, and the staff at Tommy LaFay will be giving away prizes. Plus, there's a big white hill, and what do you do on a big white hill? Ski till you drop. Don't be a stick in the mud. Come join the fun on Saturday, January the 20th at Mont Saint Marie for Winter Fantastic Day. Brought to you by Tommy LaFave and 96.9 CK DJ Ottawa's new music. Yeah, that was from my copywriting class. You sound angry. Why are you so angry at everyone? Because I was trying to make my voice deep and announcery. Everyone show up. Free burgers and dogs. Don't be a stick in them. <laughs> and what do you do on a big white hill? You ski till you drop. Yeah, that one was... You don't want to put that one on the demo. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, so um, so Saturday night... <laughs> well, first, I was invited to a friend. Her, her name's Patty. She's in a play. Let me uh, give it a, a plug here. It's in a 50-seat third down there. <laughs> can, I, can I read a... I actually took a screen grab of our... We were texting that afternoon. Can it's I called... I took a screen grab. I was going to... I wanted to send this out onto the uh, information superhighway because it was so funny. Because I said, you said, I'm at the Broadview Hotel having a drink. I said, are you alone? You said, currently. Tubesy is joining me soon. We're going to a friend of mine's play. And then my wife says, what play? And you said, no idea. (laughs) It's in a 50-seat theater a couple of blocks from here. And I say... What the hell, are you a beatnik now? And then you do a shoulder shrug emoji. And then I asked you how the play was at 6 o'clock p.m. (laughs) Didn't start for a while. Yeah. So it's called Too Good to Be True, written and directed by Cliff Cardinal, produced by Toronto's legendary Video Cabaret. Um, It was great. Um, So we went to that. Uh, Tubesy joined me. You know Tubesy. He had a penis surgery. His peen was shrinking. Or not his peen was shrinking. Sorry, dude. His peen is hole. His peen hole. Yeah. His what could get up that hole? <laughs> his peen hole was shrinking. So he sent me a text in the afternoon. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing this. You're welcome to join. He's like, ah, whatever. Tubes, he's like Kramer. Just, right. He's in. You're going to park the car? I'm in. Yeah, right. Uh, so Tubesy joined me. Uh, we went to the play, and then he's like, uh, what are we going to do now? I said, well, I'm starving. So we went and got food. He's like, what are we going to do now? I'm like, I don't know. He said, uh, well... Lil John is DJing at Rebel or 
Yeah, Rebel, Rebel Nightclub. Yeah. Which used to be, what was it called? Stuff? Rebel used to be. Ooh, I don't know. It's the size of a Vegas nightclub. There's five to 6,000 people. Sonic there. something? So I said, Tubesy, we will be the oldest people by 20 years there. He's like, so? It'll be uh, entertaining. So he wasn't performing? He was just DJing? Uh, he was DJing and also just yelling on auto. Hey! <laughs> and I uh, took a video of um, him getting the crowd going, and I think Stoff has it. There you go, spraying champagne over everyone. Okay, so um, we were up on the second level That's because it, but very quickly it was the docks. I couldn't remember. It, was, oh, it used, used to be the docks. the docks and Sound Academy. Now okay, so we went up to the second level because it's just it's sweaty people on the dance floor just bound. I'm like, I can't do this because I'll go insane. So we just went up to the second level. We're watching things, and I'm like, Hey, there's little John right there. He was like sitting in a booth in front of us, mm. and. Um, Tubesy and I. Well, was, now, was he uh, with a posse? Yes, he was with a lot of people. And I said to Tubesy, I said, I'm pretty sure he's over it. Because he was just sitting there. He has to do that every weekend. Yeah. He's like That's sitting there. He's like, living. I got to meet these people. And then I got to go on stage, yeah. spray champagne. And yeah. My favorite line of his during the night was, he yells out, what's my favorite word? And everyone's like, what? That's good. <laughs> And then they start going, what's my favorite word? What? And then they get going. I like that part. Where <laughs> am I? <laughs> <laughs> Lil John little probably John probably says that. Lil John was going to Algonquin College with you all those years ago. Do you think at this point, though, Yeah, he's because born. he's so jaded, does he just and show up and say, give me my money now? Or, But don't you think that's everybody in entertainment? Or you could make that argument, people probably think that about us. You know what I mean? Like yeah. anyone who has to go out and not that we're performers, but anyone who has to go entertain people uh, every night, like Lil John does, and he has to has to perform the same songs over and over, like uh, Neil Diamond. Yeah. Like how tired is he of singing "Sweet Caroline"? But he has to do it because what else is he going to do? There's nothing else in the world that would bring him even a shred of that joy and also money, more money than anything. And he doesn't have to come up with new material. No. Nor does, like, I don't know, is Lil John back? Does he have some cool new <laughs> tracks? Or is he just sort of stop? Let's get ready to <laughs> ski! I heard the shot, shot, shot. It felt like I heard that song 37 times yeah, that night. I feel like you'd bring that. It's like uh, you were playing... I'm not sure what you were watching, but we were just in our office, and I heard you playing a little bit of Laura Branigan's Gloria. Right. And I remember David Spade used to, he had a joke on SNL about how he went to see her in concert, and he, or he was going to go see her, and if she didn't play Gloria at least three times, he was <laughs> going to be upset. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he was probably extremely bored. And getting to my favorite topic, we, Tubesy and I discussed this again, I'm like, what do you think he got paid for this? 30? Yeah, I don't Is he know. making that much? I think more. 30? So I said between 30 and 50. Yeah, I think 50 sounds right. It was it's cheap to get good. in. It was only 15 bucks to get in. Mm. Those dollar dollar bills, y'all. Maybe he isn't making 50. Maybe he's <laughs> making five. And the, and the cool guy that I am, I walked up to the bartender. I'm like, has anyone ever ordered a red wine here? And she's like, uh, yeah. I'm like, can I have one? <laughs> was she attractive? She was annoyed with everyone there, so ah, I was yeah. like, not to. So that wasn't going to be happening, right? I feel like some red wine's got to be ordered there. Like, that's a concert venue. It's not really a. Well, I guess it's a nightclub, but it's more of a concert and venue. And then, dude, he's like, You sure you want to have a drink? I'm like, Yeah. He's like, Okay. Walk two feet in that place. It's everywhere. Right. Because everyone's bouncing around and right. God knows what they're on. Oh, yeah. That's the other thing, like, all those, you know, you're talking about people who get bored performing, like wrestlers. Like, why do the why do all the wrestlers get addicted to hard drugs? Because they, they got to go up and wrestle the same guys every night and say the same and then go back to their lonely hotel rooms. I'd be at the bar, too. I'd be ponying up to the old hotel 
the best Western hotel bar in Omaha, <laughs> just crushing old fashions. Our uh, guest on the podcast, he knows hotels uh, very well. He's the owner of Hotels.com, Jim <laughs> Hotel. Jim, how are you? <laughs> hotels.com, great app. It's the only app I use for hotels. <laughs> What about Hotel Tonight? I noticed Richard Sherman uses Hotel Tonight. Hmm. Okay. I don't use any of those ones. Hotels.com, after 10 stays, you get a free stay, and I've cashed in a few free stays. That's. Did you book all your European hotels for your upcoming trip on Hotels.com? Sure did. Wow. Big time. That's fantastic. Yep. Um, I should warn you. I'm Uh just going to say this. Uh Uh-oh. Well, our friend Ben Teller's back from Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. And you know, because I know you, you've messaged him a bit about a woman that he thinks is real and you are 1,000% sure is a bot. Yes. Uh, so he wants to come on and talk about his European adventures. How do you feel about that, Dan? I know you're apprehensive. We'll have to have a time limit on it. Okay, we'll time it. That's a good, that's a good compromise. We'll time it. And then when that timer goes off, bye-bye. Yeah, there's no time limit on our guest today. Uh, very much there is a time limit. <laughs> I have a big problem with C.J. Nikowski, and it stems from our time together at Fox and the fact that he owes me money from a trip we made together to Spearmint Rhino in the Valley. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm willing to put it behind me, C.J., if you are. Uh, oh, that's what, what a great moment for that. Was, that's what she said, right? I, and I, I, I never get sick of that. I'm such a child. I am such a child. Um, but it's a good point. You're right. You better keep it sharp eye on me. Otherwise, I will ramble on forever. No C- way. CJ, former major leaguer. We've had him on the podcast before. Now works with the Texas Rangers. Does a color commentary for them. He's in Pittsburgh. I just went to Pittsburgh recently. Great city. Uh, it is a pretty good city. We just got here. We got lucky that it's you know one of those deals where we had an off day, so we get here at a decent hour, um, right. which is nice. So usually you're rolling into like three o'clock in the morning. I don't know if you guys saw what happened with the Nationals. They didn't leave Philly till like eleven thirty this morning because their plane had all kinds of problems. So they've had a, like a nightmare travel day. Oh boy. Um, and a night game, but we got a nice one today. So yeah, you know, it's only two days. You know, it's interleague, so we're here for like a day and a half. There's night game tomorrow day game after that and we're gone so i don't think i'll get to see much of pittsburgh so quick question for you cj favorite yes. um favorite cities to travel to i mean but you played for so many teams now you're broadcasting for the texas rangers and everybody's raving about your skills there what uh what what are your favorite cities to go to on, on the major so league I, circuit yeah i love going home just to new york which is always fun um, I, I love coming to Toronto. I absolutely love Toronto. I'm not just saying that because I'm talking to you guys. I really do love it there. And we stay at an awesome hotel, which makes it even better. Um, and we only do it once a year. Like, that's what I hate about the schedule. Right? We get to go to Oakland three times a year, but we only get to go to Toronto <laughs> once. Which kind of stinks. It's not right. Um, I, I will push for the, for the balanced schedule for purely selfish reasons. I can make right. a case. Like, I'm a good BS. I can make a case why it's better for baseball, but it really is so selfish of me. It's all about um, you. But Toronto, Boston, New York are really fun. Um, I still like Anaheim's nice. I, mean, I, I don't, there's not too many bad cities anymore. Like when I broke in, there was there was more bad cities because there was bad ballparks. Mm. Like everyone's got a nice ballpark now for the most part. Well, except and, for uh, Toronto. But go on. <laughs> I just I'm telling you, I'm one of the weird guys. Like I still like going there, and I still like going to Tampa. And oh. people look at me sideways when I say that. Um, I like calling games in Tampa. Why? And, uh, Why? I don't know. It's you know what the booth is kind of low, right? The things you oh, never okay. think about as a player, right? Um, the booth and they, the new stadiums as they build them, they get higher and higher because, of course, those are premium seats, and you could put suites in there, and yeah. why would you put the dumb broadcasters in there? So you got to go high, <laughs> um, which is how it is. Like Atlanta, here in Pittsburgh, it's crazy high. Atlanta's the same. Washington, our new ballpark in Texas will be high, and that's just kind of the way that it goes. So if you can get a ballpark that still gives you a good view, uh, Seattle's great, Baltimore's great. Um, I start to appreciate those things a little bit more. It's baffling that Texas is getting a new ball. Am I crazy, or yeah. is that ballpark not very old? 1994, so yes. it's 25 years. Did, Shut piece. Is it, a P- is it a dump? Like, what no, was no, the reason? No, it's actually not. It's not a dump. It still looks really nice. I know some people are frustrated. They needed a roof in the worst way. Oh, um, because of the heat. Man. Oh, right. my gosh. We had a homestand last year, 10-game homestand. First pitch was 102 or higher every single day. Whoa. And, uh, and the booth has to be open, so you're sweating like crazy. Um, so the, and, they, you know, they lose out. They lose out on fans. That's a bigger thing. Again, they right. don't care if I'm comfortable, but it's, you know, it's everybody else. Um, so the idea of getting a roof. And, you know, the trend, right, what's going on in Atlanta and St. Louis with these, you know, ballpark village in St. Louis, the battery in Atlanta. 
um, they have this thing called Texas Live. It's already open, um, and it's right there because it's, the new stadium's going next to the old one. Texas Live is this whole deal with restaurants and bars, and it's awesome. And so even if you – whether you have tickets or not to the game, it's a great place to go hang out. Um, Pudge Rodriguez has a pizza place. Troy Aikman's got a, a, like a, a bar and music place, and it's, it's just really, really cool. They have this 100-foot screen indoors, um, which is the biggest screen in the United States that's not inside a stadium. Um, and it's just, and they got a concert venue there that holds like 5,000 people. Hmm, it's it's cool. entertainment now. So they, the idea of, you know, coming up with something to get people not just to come to games, but want to come before and after, and it's open all year round, and they make a ton of cash doing it. So, and it's right there by AT&T where the Cowboys play too. So it's just, you know, they, they saw an opportunity to do something pretty cool. Uh, they got the city to basically vote um, to cover about half of it, and, uh, and off they go. It's going to be great. Boy, I wonder if they could do that in Toronto, because the Dome opened in, what, 89 or something like yeah, that? something like that, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, clearly this city is ready for it, but uh, getting this city to pay for it would no be chance. a tricky Not happening. proposition, I think, yeah. or even half of well, it. Yeah. You know, you always always that threat, right? You need this, this threat. I know people get upset, right? But the, the, th- the threat or the fake threat of leaving. I mean, that's what the Braves did. The Braves are no longer in Atlanta, technically. Yeah. They couldn't get what they wanted. Turner Field was a, a good enough field. It wasn't that old, but the area around it just wasn't a good spot, um, you know, to put anything around it. You know, you went to the Braves game. You only went to the Braves game, and you were done. Yeah. Um, and so they moved out of, out of Fulton County and – that's why when you come to the airport in Atlanta, where I live, you never see anything. There's no signage for the Braves because wow. they're technically not in Atlanta anymore. And what's um, the what's the Braves yeah. park like? Uh, we haven't heard anything right. about it. It's in its second year, right? Yes, yeah, tra- uh, third year, I think. Because yeah, we okay. actually went there. Uh, we played there the first year for interleague. Um, and I actually took my I was home last week, and I took my son to a game. Just kind of went as a fan. It's nice. I mean, it's it's really nice. The area around it's great. Um, same kind of thing. It's the same people that build these you know these areas around them. Um, but it's good. They did a good job. The the the, uh, the booth is really high. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, but who cares, right? There's this like four people in there. Who cares? Are people oh, showing people. up? Are people showing up to their games? Yeah, they're doing pretty well. You know, they could probably could. I mean, it wouldn't have been worth it, but they could have used a roof too. Like they run into that problem, right? It's so hot there. Yeah. But yeah, I think they're drawn pretty well. You know, they put together a competitive team, uh, which has helped. You know, they're one of the few, right? That's owned by a company. Liberty Media owns the Braves, so they have to be honest about how much money they make right. and their revenues, and they're crushing it. It came out uh, a few weeks ago. I saw that their their revenues have jumped significantly the last two years. Uh, Alex Anthopoulos, our old uh, our old pal yeah. from Toronto, doing a terrific job down there. So, CJ, yeah. we know that you just saw the Blue Jays in Texas, mm-hmm. and uh, everybody's talking about Vladdy. It's a, it's like a sensation up here. It's really a sensation throughout all of baseball. It seems everyone's. Curious to see how he does. Just love to get your thoughts first of all. Overall, putting Vladdy aside for a second, <laughs> overall on this team uh, as an unbiased uh, broadcaster from a different team. Yeah, I mean they're super young, right? I mean especially now, um, but they definitely have some things. I think I don't, I don't know people get excited. I know there are certain fan bases that understand kind of what when your team is going through any kind of rebuild or you're getting younger that they can be patient and they get it. Um, but when you're in a big city like Toronto or New York, it's not that fun, right? You want to win now. But they do have some pretty exciting young pieces. They have some more coming, right? I mean, it's a really amazing how many former big league names that you would recognize. It's crazy. Their offspring or in yeah. the system of the Blue Jays. It's nuts. So that's kind of fun, right? I mean, at least it gives you some name recognition. Um, but they're, they're young, but there's there's some good pieces. You know, I, they don't look like they're going to be a competitive team um, this year. You, know, you get the year where Marcus Stroman's just been lights out. We didn't get to see him, but I've obviously followed what he's been doing. Um, and he's a really good piece of that city, I think, and that team. But, um, you know, who knows? He may end up being a trade piece because of it. But um, they have to go through that little reset, and um, and I think they're they're on the right track. You know, sometimes you watch teams go through this, and you're like, man, do they have anything? Like, it's one thing to say you're resetting, but what do you have? Um, but they got some good, they got some good pieces, and we saw Telez, and we saw um, Vladdy Jr. and and some couple other guys. So they're they're, they're in a pretty good spot. Um, I like Tiasco Hernandez. I know he hasn't been as good. I know Gurriel. I guess uh, Gurriel just come back up. I liked him when we saw him, but he wasn't there this year. So there, there's some pieces there. Um, I think they're headed in the right direction as far as rebuilds go. Do are pitchers taking a different approach to Vladdy Guerrero Jr. because he's baseball royalty and they don't want to serve up that first one? Because other guys come in the bigs and they hit one in their first. You've never heard of these guys, but everyone had heard of Vladdy Guerrero Jr. Yeah, it's the downside. I think nowadays, if you're a prospect, information flies like crazy. Right? It used to be a guy would come up, he may have a good first half year or even a first, you know, good first full year, and then we talk about how the league caught up to him. 
right? You know, sophomore slumps or adjustments, and now it's his turn to adjust. It's changed. The information is there. Chris Woodward, a former Blue Jay, who's our manager uh, with the Rangers, who was fantastic, by the way. Um, but they, uh, you know, he talked about it a little bit. He said, yeah, we got some good information. Not, not as much as we would if he was playing in the big leagues regularly, but they had some pretty good information coming in. And so they had a plan on how they wanted to pitch him as opposed to how it used to be, which was, all right, we'll pitch to him a standard way, and then we'll react accordingly. Um, and so I think that's maybe hurt a little bit. He seems like he's taking it in stride. You know, you come from a big league family, and a lot of times uh, you'll assume that this guy's ready to handle it. And I think for the most part, he seems like from the mental standpoint, he has. The only thing that I noted, we'll get a little nerdy for a second, um, is that, uh, you know, we keep track of launch angle. And he's got, I guess, about 35 plate appearances now. He's mm-hmm. got the lowest launch angle in baseball of anybody that's got 35 plate appearances. Like, he's hitting the ball on the ground like crazy. Mm. And I talked to one of our hitting coaches about it. I said, what would you see? And he's like, man, he looks like he's just chopping at the ball a little bit. Like, almost like if he's trying to put it in place. He's still aggressive. He's hitting it hard. But he's beating everything into the ground right now, mm. um, which is kind of surprising. So that's something to keep an eye on. I know he's certainly well aware of it, and their coaches are, and and they'll make the adjustments that they have to make. But that's the one thing that stuck out. He made a couple of nice plays defensively. Um, he probably ends up at first base or DH for me. Yeah, uh, he kind of comes out of that instead of third or yeah, yeah. He's big at twenty. He's pretty big. He's at a 20, big boy. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he's yeah. massive. He's a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe like Miguel Cabrera type two, right? Guy right. Who you expect to be a great hitter, but you know probably going to slow it down defensively uh, pretty early. Right. Right. And uh, oh, sorry, Dan. I wanted to ask CJ, how did you flare uh, flare fair against Vladdy Senior? Uh, you know, I don't remember. I'm, I doubt it was good. Um, <laughs> just, I didn't look. You know, it's funny because I got a, I got a great partner, man. We have a lot of fun in the booth, and he goofs around. That's the kind of thing that he would usually go look up and make fun of me of during a game. Um, you know, which is fine. I'm on board with all of that, but. Uh, you know, he was, he was – they're so different, too. Like, that's the one thing. Like, their body types are different. Mm-hmm. They're completely different hitters. You know, if I was that guy, you're like, well, where, where am I going to throw it, right? If he's hitting balls, you're bouncing. He's hitting balls that are <laughs> two feet outside. Let me just – maybe I'll throw it down yeah. the middle and I'll get lucky, right? That was always kind of a joke. But but Junior's different. He doesn't chase. Like, he's really disciplined, which is uh, encouraging and impressive. Um, you know, he's not going to he's not gonna expand the zone. So, they're actually completely different hitters. Um, but it'll be fun to watch. But, yeah, I don't think it went particularly well. Are they, um, are you, how much are you guys missing Adrian Beltre? Uh, you know what? I mean, they definitely miss him in the clubhouse, and that yeah. was a lot of talk. And he was, good. he was so good last year. Like, he was one of the people that walked yeah. away. Like, he was still producing, right? He wasn't, like, hanging in there and trying to catch some round number and limping to that round number, whether it was hits or home runs or whatever. Um, it's been, he was so fun, and he was really fun to call his games. But, you know what? They've kind of, they got this young group here, Joey Gallo, and, and Odor, I know Blue Jays fans don't like him, but there's a good group of young <laughs> fans here, our young players here that are kind of like collectively taking over that role, uh, that leadership role. These guys genuinely like each other. So I definitely miss him, but it's like anything you got, you got to move on, and they'll celebrate him a couple of times throughout the year. But, oh, man, uh, I hope they just and, celebrate and him by coming out and touching his head constantly. <laughs> that was the, the, the our favorite event. thing. Honestly, yeah. CJ, there was like nothing I liked more in baseball. Well, there was that and also – his rapport with Elvis Andrews was so <laughs> funny. Like it was, there was yeah. nothing funnier in the history of baseball to me. Just the way it was like kind of a f- weird father son dynamic, but also oh, yeah. like he was like, like Andrews would do anything to get under his skin. It was just so funny. And it was genuine. Like, you know, there's guys nowadays, like they know where the camera is. So I would see more and more of it. These guys are a little bit more media savvy and, I think for us, we can kind of, you know, sniff that out pretty quickly and who's doing stuff because they want the camera to see it. I think if it was really up to Adrian, there would be nobody in the stands and no cameras on him because so they could because they would, could legitimately do the same exact things that they do. Uh, of course, last year, the greatest thing was when he moved the on-deck circle. Like, that's, you know, like, he's just, he's not doing it for a show. He would have done that same exact thing if nobody was there. Um, and it's great. I mean, it was, it was really, really fun. Uh, to watch, and he still had for me. You know, you watch these guys with the. I don't know if you saw any of his retirement press conference last year, but you have these guys like they're crying. Oh, they they're loved him. They're thinking he's laughing his tail off <laughs> and like making jokes and making fun of the writers about how bad they were during his career. Like, and of course, like that's exactly what you would expect from an Adrian Beltre retirement press conference. Zero tears, completely joking around, <laughs> talking about how he's not going to miss anybody. I can't wait till his Hall of Fame, his Hall of Fame induction will be amazing. It um, should be good. I wonder on that stage, though, he may be a little bit more serious. We'll see. I mean, he'll have some fun, but I think he also respects it so much, too. Like, you know, when it's time to be serious, he will be. But his first choice would be to go around. Do you see him as like a – could he be a manager? Like, 
I don't think so. He said he doesn't think so either. He's like, I'm not patient enough for it. And that's true. And especially nowadays, man, these guys work so ridiculously hard. There's so much information that you have to filter through. I mean, every team's got two hitting coaches and two pitching coaches now. It's, It's a different game from when he first came up. And he understands that. I think his best value. Uh, if you were ever to do it, would be as a, a special assistant, not the PR special assistant, right? You get certain guys that are like, hey, he's a special assistant to the GM, and that guy signs autographs and does, like, sweet visits. And then you get, like, a guy like Michael Young, who's a special assistant to the GM, who actually really does some things. They'll send him to the minor leagues once in a while. Hey, go talk to this guy, whatever it may be. Uh, you get a guy that really is kind of entrenched in your organization as well to help out. I think Adrian could be that guy if he wants to, uh, but I think he's enjoying life in Los Angeles right now. Um, CJ, before we let you go, putting you on the spot here, we work in an industry where we're lucky. We get to see free sports uh, because that's part yeah. of our job. So take that out of the equation. If you had to pay to see five current major leaguers, who would you pay Ooh. money to see right now in the majors? Where you're like, yep, that guy's coming to town. I'm going to see him. So it would be Mike Trout uh, for sure. That's an easy one. Uh, I'd probably watch J.D. Martinez. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, J.D. Martinez is fun to watch. Yeah. I think he's, he's pretty special. Um, so from the hitting side, and I'll, I'll be I, – whenever I do this kind of stuff, I always say I'm not going to do any Rangers. I automatically take them out. <laughs> so I don't, cause otherwise, I just give you five Rangers because I like my job, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I like to keep it. But uh, those would be a couple um, for me. You know, Vladdy's not there yet, but I think he will be eventually. Um, I got to think pitching-wise. Oh, you know, Bellinger, Clay Bellinger right now is fun to watch. Yeah. He's playing with some player and he's absolutely crushing it. Um, pitchers that I would pay to see. I'm trying to think of our youngest studs because it's been a weird year, right? I mean, we've had some guys that have gotten off to some really slow starts. Uh, yeah. you got Chris Sale trying to figure out his velocity. Uh, you got some big Marcus. Max Scherzer's off to a, you know, a slow start this year. He's still striking dudes out, but he's got like an ERA over four, which is, you know, not like him. Um, I'm trying to think, and you know, it's funny. If you start looking, went and looked at like the top 10 pitchers right now, there's not yeah. a ton of name recognition. There are Tyler Glass now, what he's doing with the Rays, and I'm sure a lot of people are like, ooh, what? Uh, he's pretty exciting. You haven't picked Bryce there. Harper yet. I thought Harper would be on your list, but uh, now overrated? You know, I, I, no, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't think he's overrated. Um, you know, it's, it's weird because, like you said, we see so much of it on our own um, that I almost feel like I'm used to seeing it. But that, that's a ticket. That's that's money worth spending. Uh, but it would be second for my feelers. Of course I'm picking first. I'd pay to watch Dave Calper manage. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, our buddy. Uh, that's our pal. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about over there? Of course. That's, a, that's an absolute... Uh, Absolute no-brainer. Still in better then, uh, shape than 89% of Major League players. Yeah, did you see when Bryce got kicked out and, he, and Gabe was, like, pushing him back? And I'm like, well, that's actually, like, a legitimate life. That's, like, that's a crap a I'd pay to see. Now, that's right. Again, it's something I'd be interested in. Yeah. Actually, the guy okay. I would pick, CJ, is Nolan Arenado. That guy yes. is yeah. incredible. Yeah, Matt Chapman, a name that most people don't know. And you'd, you'd pay to see him on the road so you don't have to go to Oakland. Right. Yeah, right. The way that, that you would do until they get their new ballpark, because um, he's pretty special. But yeah, it's a good one. Arenado's a really good. Choice. I would pick the greatest major leaguer of all time, um, and you know him well, Joey Gallo, because he gave my daughters two signed baseballs. So and he's crushing it this year, man. He's a different guy. Um, you know, he's hit like, in the really low two hundreds, like barely two hundreds, the last two years, and uh, he's made some pretty big adjustments and has a respectable batting average and. Um, He's killing it, and uh, it's been it's really, really fun to watch him see. And he's just a good dude. They got a lot of good dudes here, so you got to believe we'll be CJ in that you got to believe that that the reason Joey turned his his whole career around is just running into Dan up here. <laughs> yeah, well, he enjoyed seeing him at the game, and like I told people at the time, I think he was super jazzed because he's tied with Odor, and so when Dan was wearing his Odor jersey, uh, <laughs> Jay, man, it was uh, it was really. Uh, he really appreciated that because he knows what courage that takes. That so, that CJ, Toronto. you're saying you're here in August? August. We're, at, we're there during the week. I think we have, like, two night games and a day game. It's like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I was just looking at the schedule. All right. We'll book the show off, and we'll come on down. Yeah. August 12th to the 14th. We're, we're going to shut this show down, and we're going to be down yeah. there. Yeah, man, yeah. it's awesome to catch up with you, man. I'm so glad you're doing great and uh, still kicking ass and all that. And uh, hopefully we can hang out with you again sometime soon. I'd love to, man. I miss you guys. You're awesome. And I'm fortunate to know you and come on the podcast. I love coming on the podcast. It's a, it's a pleasure. Enjoy the Berg. Have a Primanti Brothers sandwich tonight. Yeah, get the, the spicy capicola. I don't know what any of that means. I'm having my apple and my uh, my trail mix. I'm going tapper style tonight. Okay. okay. See you, buddy. <laughs> See you, buddy. See you guys. That's uh, C.J. Nikowski. Works for the Texas Rangers and uh, had a nice uh, nice career in the majors as well. We got to work with him at Fox Sports. He's as I'm sure our our listeners now are pretty familiar with him. Like just a 
fantastic guy. Yeah. He gave us, uh, we had a memorabilia all over our set at Fox, and he gave us a game-used Tigers hat of his. We still have it. Where is it? It's on top of my uh, <laughs> wardrobe closet. <laughs> like, Along with our, our, our replica Vince Lombardi trophy that's signed by, like, mm. six Super Bowl winners. I'm surprised. That one's actually cool. It. That yeah. one's a very cool. Uh, our, you know, our office is becoming full of cool things. Uh, the painting by your cousin Eric is mm-hmm. very cool. Uh, the picture from your pet calendar. Yeah. Very <laughs> prestigious. Lots of in- my floss. I've got some floss in there. Big floss guy. I've got stacks of floss. And I, um, out of a courtesy to you, I feel bad about flossing. Like, so I just decided I'm not flossing enough. For whatever reason, I'm like, I'm going to bring floss to work and just floss. We've got like a little downtime. I'm going to do it. But I don't want to do it. Because Dan and I share an office. I don't want to do it because that's just disgusting. It's like flossing on a subway or something. It's just disgusting. So I go into one of the managers, one of the many managers at TSN. I go into his office every night, and I floss sitting at his desk. I'm not going to say who it is. Um, so your DNA is all over that office. All over that guy's desk. All <laughs> over it. And I go to the same office every night. And it's become a running joke on the show because everybody knows which when I'm going into that office, they're like, yeah, he's going to floss in there. So if he gets like put up on murder charges or something, then they go fingerprint or blue light his office. You're going to be uh, implicated. It's very possible. So cross your fingers that this guy doesn't murder anybody <laughs> because uh, I've been flossing in there big time. A lot of floss. This plaque, it doesn't match up. <laughs> We've got another suspect. <laughs> Uh, you uh, oh, go ahead. We still haven't got to our Salino and Barnes. Um, oh, last yeah, week, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were talking about my slip and fall. You heard it on the intro to the podcast. Yes, yes. Uh, good news. I'm okay. So the incident report got filed by producer Tim. I, first of all, I love that he had to do that I as know. your manager. He's like, are you, are you this for real? I'm like, yes. In case I'm hurt, I need to have documentation. Haven't heard from anyone. They def- they don't call to say, "Hey, are you okay? Sorry that happened." It's nothing. Silence. Of course uh, not. They want you to go away silently. <laughs> <laughs> I called to see if there was video of it. Security, I had to fill out a whole form. I'm I'm not f-ing doing this, so I guess we won't see the video because I wanted to use it on the show. Doesn't exist. So um, anyway, we talked about how I should be represented by Salino and Barnes, <laughs> yes. and I guess we now have some commercials made up uh, for this very. Thing. True story. On the way to this podcast, I had a slip and fall on a mop floor in the Bell Building. My arm is f- It hurts. After I was hurt on the job, the insurance company said they paid $35,000. Salino and Barnes made them pay over a million. What's your case really worth? The guy came out from his little mop station. He's like, yeah. Because I'm like, ah, f-. He's like, what happened? I'm like, I just fell. After an accident. You might have pain every My day. shoulder locked behind me trying to trying to brace myself. So I got a knee and a shoulder issue. You could have a very long recovery ahead of you. So what's the protocol? Do I let my, uh, de- my uh, department manager know that I fell? If you're injured in an accident, choosing the right law firm is crucial. I'm in pain. Don't wait. Call eight. No matter what kind of accident, head on, rear end, or T-bone. There was a blind corner. Salino and Barnes are ready to help 24-7. And with their no-fee promise, you don't pay unless they win. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. I think you have a pretty nice case here. Salino and Bonds Injury Attorneys. 800-888-8888. Don't wait. Call 8. I can't even drink with that arm now. (laughs) That guy got a million bucks when he thought he was getting 35? Stop. You are a genius. That was brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, oh, we do have one more oh. that uh, airs in a different market. If you guys oh, want. perfect. <laughs> okay, let's check this one out. <laughs> oh yeah, my arm still really hurts. Forgot. Oh Ooh, yeah, you're hurt. Pain getting worse. worse. Las obras de construcción pueden ser muy peligrosas y aunque hay numerosas medidas de seguridad, muchos trabajadores sufren lesiones graves en accidentes en el trabajo. I'm in pain. Como una de las empresas más grandes en lesiones personales del estado de Nueva York, There was a blind corner. de Celino y Barnes tienen vasta experiencia en casos de accidentes de construcción. Si usted ha sido lesionado, llame hoy a Celino y Barnes. Santo Domingo. <laughs> I just have one question. 
why isn't the phone number in Spanish? <laughs> and why is it different? And why is it different? Just cinco, 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 cinco. Why wouldn't it be that? Jeez. Boy, that is nice. That, we've got the we've got the Hispanic market covered. After that fall, I woke up the next morning. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little disappointed that I wasn't banged up. I banged up like drunk. No, no, like, like couldn't get out you of wanted, bed. You wanted more bruises. You wanted more physical evidence that you were suffering, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, did I hit my head maybe? No, nothing. No, that's possible. You know what we didn't talk about? Uh, last week, I guess it's two weeks ago, somebody actually paid to go for dinner with us in an auction. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, the Special Olympics Gala. Mm -hmm. And one of the items at the gala was to have dinner with you and me. That's right. And oh, an amazingly lovely family bid for and won this auction. Uh, the Thomases, uh, Benji, uh, Sonia, Jared, Daniel, and Matthew. Uh, the Thomases, right? That was Jaden. Jaden. I said Jared. Jaden. Because it was like Dan and Jay. But Jaden and Daniel and then Matthew. That's right. And Matthew and then Sonia was the mom. And then her brother Rob, I believe his yep. name was. And so they all came. And we went to Barbarian Steakhouse. And if, if you're not familiar, it's like a legendary old school steakhouse in downtown Toronto. It's been there for decades. Phenomenal. And lots of hockey teams go there. And it's very, very popular. And and I had personally never been there. And all the years I'd lived here, I'd never been. I don't think you had either. Nope. It was pretty cool. We wandered in. The owner immediately came into our room and was, well, he never really left. He stayed there a long time. Yeah, and then he showed us the, uh, the, the biggest wine cellar in Canada. Amazing wine cellar. Like, it's insane. 25 feet high. Um, like, insane amounts of bottles. And, and what did he say the most expensive one was? Uh, I think it was like 30000 Crazy. And, and I said, when the zombies come, I want to be locked in here. Yes, it's a wonderful place. Wonderful way to go out. Wouldn't it be? Just gorging yourself on the sweet red wine. But the zombie apocalypse is one day they come in, all the the guys, guys, it was one day you drank all the wine. Wine's all gone. We got <laughs> the zombies. We killed them. Now we're out of business. We've been in business since the 19th. Guys, it was one day. You drank all the vin. <laughs> Anyway, we were uh, sitting in a private room. It was just having a great time. The kids were so sweet. The mom and dad, uh, Benji and Sonia, they made them, uh, they made the kids come up with questions for us, which was really cool, really sweet. So we were having a great time. Then all of a sudden, the owner kind of pulls me aside and says, uh, I'm just going to shut the door here because uh, in the private room across from you, there are 16 <laughs> strippers <laughs> celebrating a birthday. They're from For Your Eyes Only, which is uh, a strip club in downtown now, Toronto I, on King Street. 16 strippers. Should point out, they were not stripping. They were clothed, fully clothed. Yeah. Wait, what kind of testicle is this? <laughs> but they looked very much <laughs> like you would expect strippers <laughs> to look at a steakhouse, right? They looked. Like prostitutes, basically, and so they were in the, they were in the room across from us, and it was amazing because these, these boys are like, what eight, nine, ten years old, yeah, and we're trying to, trying to shut the door, but at the same time peek through the door. <laughs> it was a moral dilemma through the whole meal. Really, we could have left it open. They weren't doing anything bad. They wouldn't even noticed. No, they were just sitting there. They it wasn't like. That was the thing. I was when he first said there's 16. Think about that. That's like a movie. <laughs> 16 strippers in a <sighs> steakhouse, and right? Like the craziness that could have ensued. It, business it had, must be good at for your eyes only because barbarians is nope, not cheap. No kidding. I'm it not is, taking anyone there. Too expensive for me. Very expensive. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking the stripping business. There's something to it. I'm thinking these ladies are making some okay cash. And I'm thinking they're not paying full rate of taxes. They're not claiming it all. And I had the worst seat in the house. As yeah, you, you had your back to the door. I know. I could have got shivved at any moment. And plus, I couldn't see what was going on the other side of that door because I had my back to it. Bad placement by me. I thought it would have been cool if the boys took some of the questions that they had for us and <laughs> took them into the strippers. <laughs> How did you get into your industry? Right. Exactly. 
Did you always want to be a stripper? <laughs> it has changed my life. What kind of education do you need to become a stripper? Or a lot of them are probably paying for education. I I hope so. Yeah, for sure. I hope so. Anyway, I'm sure they were having a good time. I so thanks for Barbarians good. for hosting us. Thank was, you very because, much. Um, Aaron Barbarian, the owner, came in. A really yeah. nice guy. And he donates... Um, a lot to the Special Olympics. He, he donates sure a lot around Toronto. So. Yeah, yeah. Very generous uh, with his money. And... and he's got seats at the Jays game. And I'm like, I'll go. He never, he never. I don't think. Followed up on that. He did. He's calling you. <laughs> no. No, they, he, he, all the staff was very sweet to us and said they were all fans. So we should maybe start frequenting that place. Throw a little of our Bell money around. Yeah, throw, just... throw a little of your Salino and Barnes money around. I was throwing mine at uh, the restaurant across the street, Local 44. I went again for the second time. So this is, again, I think we've discussed this. Yeah. This restaurant across the street from our studio in Scarborough. It's been many different restaurants. They seem to have settled on Local 44. And you're saying to me that tonight there were people in there. Yeah, there was people. Uh, The brisket, pretty good, with the broccolini and mashed potatoes. Did you eat alone? Yes. At the bar? Yes. Make friends with the bartender? Maybe. No. Okay. Took a while to get a glass of water. I got it at the end. Anyway. Mm. Uh, but beautiful TVs. Work. Crystal clear. They had Corey Warren on Sports Center when I walked in. C Dub. Yeah. Looking great. So yeah. thanks for putting Sports Center on it. Local 44. Corey Warren's looking great. He doesn't age. Nope. Um, but we got to run. Uh, yes, we do. It looks like uh, oh. the Blue Jackets are done. Yeah, that story. Looks like bye has gone. He's going to be permanently off the case. He's going to Florida, baby. He's going to be making some sweet. What do you predict his salary will be? I'm thinking it's going to be close to 10 mil. I was going to say seven or eight. Yeah, it's probably more realistic. Um, and I'm overshooting it. I'm only saying that because when has a number one goaltender gone to unrestricted free agency like this. This is pretty... I mean, you have a goalie like that, you have a chance. You have a chance to win. Unless you're Columbus. But then teams are going to point to Carolina and say, look what they did with the uh, hodgepodge goal. No doubt. No doubt about that. No doubt. No doubt about it. Guys, it's been a pleasure to provide this entertainment to you. Oh, all I'm tasting is brisket now. Have a great week.